Hi guys, about a week ago there was a video by Veritasium called The Big Misconception About Electricity and this has been talked about a lot on the internet and one of the interesting things that he brings up in this video is this particular thought experiment. How this goes is something like this, it's got a battery and it's just a simple circuit with a light bulb on the other side. There's a switch there and uh, these wires extend a long distance about half a light second so basically if you were to travel the length of the wire it would take one second to go to the end of the wire and back and the question that he asks is this which is so if you turn on the switch at time t equals zero then when does the light bulb come on. The thing that he wants to get at in this video is that basically that the correct answer is 1 over c which is the, the, the actual distance from the battery to the light bulb. Oh, I forgot to mention that the, the distance between the wires is 1 meter. Right. So the just the straight distance between the battery and the light bulb is 1 meter so the time would be 1 over c. Uh, not like 1 second as you might expect uh, because of the electric field traveling down the wire. There's been already actually a lot of response videos about this and actually some of them explain uh, this idea pretty well and this one is actually my favorite one and then the way that he explains it is something like this. He says that basically these two wires you can think of them just as capacitors and when you flick the switch basically what it's doing is to charge the capacitors right and the capacitors, for example, it will move some charge from one end of this wire to the other so that uh, it will charge up this capacitor. So this side is like negatively charged. And then this will attract some charge on the other side, like move the charges around. And so you would see the light bulb just flick on in the time that it takes for basically the electric fields in the capacitors to reach the other side of the wire. And so he did some actual simulations and he showed that yes, you do actually get a, a current. But actually, this is like a tiny, tiny effect, right? So this is not the direct current that's going all the way around the wires. This is just like some induced current on on the other side. Basically what will happen is kind of two things, which is that you flick the switch, it will move the charges on the other wire where the light bulb is in the time 1 over C. But then the main kind of current will come later and that will indeed come like one second later because it takes time of one second to go all the way around the long way around the circuit. So basically this, you know, the, the way that he phrases the video, it's a little bit misleading in, in this way because when you normally think of when does a light bulb come on, you think of like the full current to go through, not like some induced current on the other side. So even though the 1 over C is technically correct, a lot of people have been saying that it's misleading in a way. Anyway, so there's already a lot of videos about this topic. So what I want to talk about today is something a little bit different actually. So um, actually what the whole point of this very Veritasium video is, I think in fact his sort of example slightly um, detracts from the, the point that he's actually wanting to make. The actual point that he really wants to make is that if you have this circuit like this, and this is a picture taken from his video, then you have the magnetic field lines here in blue, and then the electric field lines in red, and then as we learn from electromagnetism, then you have a pointing vector, and the pointing vector is yellow, and the pointing vector is actually going from the battery to the light bulb. And, and this, the pointing vectors do not necessarily follow the wires. And so what it looks like is that it, the actual power transfer is actually going through the air rather than the wires, right? This was actually the point that he wanted to make. And, and that thought experiment that he was talking about is actually just sort of an illustration of this. And so he was basically trying to say that, okay, well, if we have the battery and the light bulb one meter away and it travels through the, not the wire, but actually just through space, then it should take one over C. But then everybody got into a discussion about, you know, this kind of transient currents and 
you know, charging the capacitor and, and, and so forth that um, I think it started to deviate a little bit from what the uh, actual point of the video is, which is actually all about really pointing vectors. What I wanted to say is something like this. So if you look up all this stuff on um, pointing vectors in electromagnetism textbook, all this stuff that we're talking about is actually right there. So for example, if you look in Introduction to Electrodynamics by Griffiths, this is my favorite electrodynamics textbook. So he has an example that's very much like this. Um, so he's got like, here a metal cylinder and we can say that this is like the light bulb and there's a battery on the other side and so basically just through very simple arguments what he says is that um, if you put a voltage V on one side and this thing has a length of L then there's electric field through it that's running parallel through the wire and if you got a current you also got a magnetic field and then you can calculate Poiting's vector and then that becomes some quantity like this, like VI over 2 pi RL. And then if you integrate over some surface, then you get the usual power relation, which is power equals VI and basically leaves it at that. But you can see that the pointing vector S is pointing into the wire. Yeah, from the side, right? So it's, it's right there already. It's not something which everybody noticed now. In fact, everybody knows this from a long time ago. And in fact, so in Griffiths, they don't really talk so much about the interpretation of this, but in Feynman's lectures, he does. There's an interesting quote from Feynman, and he says that basically that, um, he says that this theory is obviously nuts. Somehow energy flows from the battery Yes, battery to infinity and then back into the load, which is very strange, right? This, this is what he says. And not only did he give um, some examples uh, exactly just like this circuit that uh, we were talking about, but he gave two other examples, which I want to just uh, introduce. And these are designed just to sort of show that this is kind of pretty weird. So the first example that he shows, let's just think of a parallel plate capacitor and you're charging it up and it's slowly charging, right? So charges are building up on the two sides and then you can easily see that the electric field is going to be building up between the parallel plates, right? And then so the uh, energy is going to be building up in the capacitor because the energy density is uh, E squared, right? Now, because like some current is flowing into the capacitor, there's going to be a current while the capacitor is charging. And that's also going to induce a magnetic field, but it's going to be sort of in this circular direction like this. So we've got, a, we've got an electric field and we've got a magnetic field. And then we can calculate pointing vector. So that's E cross B. And then so that's pointing in to the side, from the sides, yeah, into the capacitor. So that's basically saying that energy is flowing from just sort of outside this system into the capacitor, which seems crazy again, and he says it's crazy, um, because obviously the wires are charging the capacitor, but Poynings vector says that its energy is coming in just from the sides. Another example that he gives, uh, goes like this. So, um, so he first says, okay, to finally, to really convince you that this theory, this pointing vector theory is obviously nuts, uh, we will take one more example. And the example that he gives is a charge and a magnet just right next to each other. So obviously there's an electric field because the charge has an electric field. And then obviously there's a magnetic field too, because there's a magnet. So there's E, there's a B, so there will be um, a pointing vector, right? And if you calculate like what the pointing vector looks like, well, it it's like circling this uh, charge and magnet. And so he says this, so he says the pointing vector circulates around, around and around. There isn't any change in the energy anywhere. Everything which flows in one volume flows out again. So there is a circulation of energy in this so-called static condition. So nothing is moving here, right? So the charge and the magnet's not moving, it's just, just sitting there. In his opinion, this is pretty absurd. Like you have just a completely static system, yet basically what pointing, pointing vector says is that it's like energy is just orbiting this charge and magnet. That doesn't seem to really make sense because 
you know what what could possibly really be flowing here with nothing charge just, yeah I think if there is a flow of energy, then it have effect on motion of particle. I mm. think, but it seems to be static. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So yes. Is, yes. So you would think it would affect something, right? Something. Maybe move something, or but but apparently there's this flow of energy circulating, orbiting around these two things, and so that's what it does. So people have known that this is very weird, very difficult to interpret for a long time, and people have even tried to fix this, right? And to say, okay, well, this is so weird. So can we make up an alternative theory? And so there is one paper like this in published in 2004. And basically what they do is to say that, well, actually there, you know, when you uh, create a circuit like this, there are like surface charges. But when you connect a battery to a resistor, there's like positive charges on one side all around. And then on the negative side, there's negative charges all on the surface of the wire. And because of this charge accumulation, actually the electric field is not along the wire. In fact, it's perpendicular to the wire. Okay. And then if the electric field is perpendicular to the wire, then the pointing vector is actually in the right direction. So the, the energy is actually flowing along the wire. Now, you know, I don't know if this theory really makes sense at all. But this is just to illustrate that people have tried to fix the theory. It's definitely not mainstream kind of thought. Uh, what people do do is to do things like plot the pointing vector. So there's a whole bunch of other papers, which is, you know, trying to um, get to the bottom of this. And th these are things like plots of the pointing vector through a circuit. And so you can see that the, you know, density of the uh, pointing vector is actually high around the battery and then the resistor. So to summarize, I don't know if I really have a actual conclusion here, but the first thing is that this pointing vector thing is weird. And so, you know, I'm not sure if you can really take it sort of literally of where the, you know, that the energy is sort of literally there. It does give very curious results and it is sort of notoriously difficult to interpret. So in very Tassium's video it sort of says it as a, as a kind of a truth that um, the energy is, you know, just flowing through the, the actual space rather than the wires. Well, I think everything's always open to interpretation. So, you know, if you, of course, there'll be some people that interpret that literally, but I think a lot of people are also very confused by this object. So, um, so yeah, so that's it. I'm just thinking that if the direction of flow and the direction of uh, and the and the energy transfer is same or not. Maybe what you're asking is like, what is the effect of the pointing vector? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what of, does yeah, it actually yeah, yeah. actually do? Actually doing, doing yeah. yes. It's a good question. I, I don't know um, because really the pointing vector is a derived quantity it's like when we think of the electric field magnetic field these are sort of real fields right pointing vector is yeah. not a not an actual field it's a kind of a construct to evaluate the the power or the energy uh, yeah. energy so perhaps it's not real in the same sense that an electric field and magnetic field are real yeah i think we can measure e electric field or magnetic field but mm. pointing vector can oh. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> oh. mm. so my interpretation here is maybe pointing vector itself does not really make sense if you want to study the whole field, but not sure if it makes sense uh, physically, but I think mathematically you could compute the Laplacian of this computed pointing vector, and then you would have sources and sinks, because these are correct in the pointing vector, right? You see where the energy flows from mm. and where it leads, and these are correct, actually. Hmm. So I think the whole field computed from this pointing vector maybe does not always make sense. Mm -hmm. If you compute sources and sinks, it mm -hmm. makes sense. Right, I see. So you're sort of saying is you kind of need to integrate it because this is an yeah. energy density so that uh, if any, the pointing de vector itself is at a given particular point in, in space is not really yes. particularly meaningful maybe, yeah. Mm. So you, you sort of convert the uh, vector field to the scalar field. 
Yes. And then you get some different things, and that would make sense, I think. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yes. And I mean, I guess well, that, you think the energy is something that is going to be kind of real, right? But <laughs>、um, <laughs> maybe in this so, case, might, <laughs> you know, it's very it's very common that there is a quantity that perfectly makes sense, but there are many ways to compute it.、Hmm. So you know, the energy source and energy sort of target makes sense, but the way you compute it gives you something weird at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to think of a similar example. I couldn't quite think of one. The, the quantity that you actually deal with is weird, but then eventually it gives you the right answer. So,、mm. quantum wave function might not really be actually a very good example. That does have some similar elements. That the wave function itself has some weird properties, but eventually it gives the right physical quantities, like probabilities. Yeah, I think quantum example would only make it more confusing. I think so. Yes, yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's why I wanted a simple example. Yeah, what I could say is maybe we really have to really think about this about this thing deeper. But honestly, I don't. It, it beats me. It beats the imagination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Shall we leave it there? Okay. So, hope. This video clarified a couple more ideas about this、uh, Veritasium video, and we will see you for the next video. Bye. Bye.